Welcome back to Charmed Rewind, everyone. Are you too excited? Nope. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a very special guest on this one. Uh, we're joined by Peter Hunter. Hello. He's been uh, editing the, uh, the podcast for us. Hey, Peter. Yes. Hello, everyone, and hello to me in the future when you're editing this. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the singer of the car man theme. <laughs> yeah. The car man theme was so good. Yeah. Yes. I, had a, I had a friend text me at like after midnight and he was like, who the fuck is car man? <laughs> I've had, I've had that stuck in my head for like, for, for like a week now. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's playing right now. So um, it's stuck in everyone's head again. <laughs> There's a car man waiting in his car He'd like to come and meet us But he's just a fucking car There's Did you see the amazing car man art uh, that I saw, was sent? Yeah, I saw one of them. It was like a pencil sketch. I was like, oh my god, it's car man. He's real. <laughs> there was a couple of them. They were very good. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out uh, on Twitter to uh, Nobody700. And uh, Salazar Art Nation, both of them did fantastic uh, car man arts, yeah. and I, I like they had their own interpretations too. One of them had uh, headlight nipples <laughs> and grill shorts. Yes. <laughs> the other one was like a slightly more realistic approach. Looked very much like the actor. Pretty good. Yeah, I love seeing car man artwork. <laughs> Yeah, more people should send in their car man artwork. We're gonna make him a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, uh, Peter, this is your first episode of Charmed, huh? Yes, I I never sat down and watched an episode of Charmed before, uh, despite editing a podcast about Charmed, um, and it was an experience. Um, yeah, condolences. <laughs> Like at least it got uh, my first one got to include uh, America's sweetheart French Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> if you only watch one charmed episode, I mean, I guess this is the one to watch. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we had another poll on Patreon uh, to decide what episode to review on uh, Charmed Rewind. Uh, the poll was called French Stewart Genie. And the choice was between French Stewart Genie, French Stewart Genie, French Stewart Genie, or French Stewart Genie. Which number one? <laughs> you know what? I'll look right now. I'll see which <laughs> which one was in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Patreon, load up. Uh, number three, the third French uh, Stewart genie with 34% of the votes. Uh, definitely felt like we watched the third one. Yeah, number two did the worst. Uh, they did not want that one. Uh, that was, uh, this was season two, episode 22, Be Careful What You Witch For, not to be confused with the new Charmed episode also called Be Careful What You Witch For, because apparently they ran out of puns. So good, use it twice. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, let's jump right into this episode, shall we? I guess. Yeah, let's 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 French steward it up here. Let's, no. uh, they yeah. just uh, they just <laughs> tossed you right into the deep end, Peter. It, it opens uh, with an uh, a meeting with the Council of Evil. Um, yeah. in their their faux velvet robes. Yeah, it looks like a seventies couch. <laughs> Yeah, they had shitty robes like that for the elders too. I remember, and I remember there was a um, uh, a panel at a convention somewhere where uh, Brian Krause, uh, who plays Leo, was talking about those robes and how shitty they were. <laughs> <laughs> Even he was making fun of them. <laughs> There's the leader of this group is like J.G. Hertzler with like a boa <laughs> around him. Was he the leader? <laughs> I he seemed tell. like he was the leader, at least <laughs> the way this episode set it up. But guess how many more episodes he's in? Is this the only one? This is the only one. <laughs> Wait, is like the council a thing in Charmed, or is this like the only time it happens? They were a thing. Okay. Um, I don't remember if they had a name other than Council of Evil. It was kind of vague. 
Yeah, they just called them the council in this one. So. Oh. Yeah, I think they were just the council. Um, yeah. I'd have to look back at my videos <laughs> or pay closer attention to charms. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, their uh, their goal is to kill the charmed ones, much like any of the villains uh, of this show. That's all you really need to know about them, because uh, I know about as much as you at this point. Oh, great. <laughs> told you everything I know about them. <laughs> well, good. I'm, I'm glad I'm pl- on level playing field here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like teamed up with dragon demons who are just douchebags and leather pants. Yeah, it's about as creative as when uh, when Supernatural did a dragon. And it was just a dude. Yeah, that breathed fire. Like, it's, oh, all right. Yeah. Isn't that the gang in Riverdale? Aren't they the dragons? The serpents. No, the serpents. Serpents. Ah, How yeah. could you forget that? They say it a million <laughs> yeah. times an episode. They go, this is serpent business. <laughs> You're either with or against the serpents. Oh, forgive me, Riverdale. I'm so sorry. Archie, hell is not being in the serpent, 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 serpents. <laughs> oh, I love Riverdale. You ever see me with that <laughs> serpent jacket? It's weird. Uh, what a weird show. It's um, sad yeah. you know more about Riverdale than Charmed. <laughs> Look. Is it, is it sad? sad actually? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. It was sad I said that. <laughs> Riverdale is a very engaging, horrible show, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but did it have French Stewart as a genie? I think not. <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> no. All right. They couldn't All right, well, afford this, uh, French this dragon. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this isn't even the worst thing we've seen French Stewart in. <laughs> We saw Love Stinks. All of us have seen Love Stinks here. I think everyone in the audience is familiar with the hit movie Love Stinks. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Where he's like, I'm an unlikable ass hat. And then he pops into this episode. He's like, I'm a genie who's an unlikable ass hat. (laughs) I'm playing against type here. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Um, Okay, so... (laughs) We're we're not even one note into this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so the evil council is um they are reprimanding this dragon warlock uh because he he fucked up. He was supposed to uh kill the charmed ones and he didn't. So they summon French Stewart Genie as their plan B. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great plan. I'll grant them wishes. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> I'll grant them wishes, that'll be their undoing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and we we're all like, oh, it's like a, it's going to be a monkey paw thing. And it was like, it kind of is, but not really. Yeah, no. yeah. It is, but really it's a bit of a subterfuge on his part. He's uh, yeah. he's tricking the evil council into sending him out because uh, he really he just wants to grant these wishes and set himself free. He doesn't really care if they die. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care if they live either, but he's not really, that's not his yeah. primary goal. And they don't even really make wishes. He just kind of interprets lines as wishes. Yeah, I find it kind of weird. Uh, I mean, I guess this isn't the weirdest thing, but his whole outfit situation. <laughs> they, they clearly got him in like kind of one of those Aladdin get-ups, but like French Stewart's like the whitest person who ever lived, oh, right? Oh, he's up there. He's, he's like, he's in the Hall of Fame right there. Like <laughs> Even white people, uh, which would be us, we're like, oh, damn, that's white. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't really, it just looks silly. It looks silly. He can dress in anything he wants, modern it up a little bit. (laughs) I don't even know why I wrote this quote down. I I didn't even know. (laughs) I don't know. Someone says he doesn't know that. He's a genie. They're they're tricking him. Uh, The the demons. Um, I don't know why I wrote that. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Maybe I thought it was funny they were making fun of a genie. Like, oh, that idiot. (laughs) I mean, it just kind of makes them look dumb. They're like, what's our big plan? A genie. <laughs> of all the things, they're the Council of Evil. Presumably, I- unless they just gave that title to themselves, they're very, very evil dudes. Like, and they, they ju- their plan is genie. <laughs> yeah. I'm a throwaway villain. Fear my generic motives. They, they've got this, like, warlock that can breathe fire. Like, why don't they send, like, three of these dudes instead of sending, like, one to take no. out three witches? Like, it doesn't... They got, they got the rule of one demon at a time. <laughs> they can't throw all their firepower at them. <laughs> um, speaking of Council of Evil, the Charmed Ones, <laughs> <laughs> they're hanging out. Um, Phoebe has a twisted ankle. I kind of wonder if Alyssa Milano maybe did just twist her ankle and they wrote it into there. Because yeah. it doesn't really seem like it's that plot relevant. It's... 
It's such a fresh take on them to open on them complaining about something. <laughs> <laughs> They're complaining because they've done so well and killed so many evil things that maybe their luck was running out on them, and that's why her ankle's all messed up. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, we've been doing such a great job. I just feel like we're just so great. We're so what's better yeah. than us? Nothing. Phoebe's whining, and then Piper's like, Ugh, barely holding back her contempt for everyone in the room. <laughs> well, she's on edge because neighbor Dan's back in town. <laughs> oh, neighbor Dan, Dan is back in town. <laughs> if this was the only episode you saw Peter out of context, would you think neighbor Dan was like an important character in the show? <laughs> um, I thought he had a Jonathan Taylor Thomas haircut, and um, that was about all I thought about neighbor Dan. Yeah. He's uh, the greasy butt crack poo flap of the series. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very superlative right there. Yeah. They are they are actually referencing some plot stuff that he was doing in in his one season run, his his stunning one season of Charmed. <laughs> the last time they saw him, uh, he had proof that Leo died in 1942. See, there was this whole love triangle going on, and and uh, Piper was going back and forth between them, and he was uh he was like this Leo guy. I I don't trust him. I think something's up with him, and he he investigated him, and he found out that's what was going on. But it turns out Piper knew all along, of course, because he's the white lighter. It was it was this whole big thing but not really that big of a thing because it doesn't really matter nothing really matters <laughs> anyone <laughs> can see because there's a car <laughs> <laughs> in his car <laughs> oh. uh, alright well they find a box on their porch uh, it's got a lamp inside and that summons French Stewart no <laughs> It's the worst <laughs> gift. <laughs> well, I was fired from being Yogi Bear because I took my head off in front of the children. Yeah, they said they're like, gonna put this lamp like subtly for them to find or something. So they just dump it on their doorstep. <laughs> oh, there's a genie lamp. That's not suspicious. <laughs> what if they didn't rub it? They just open it. They're like, what's this? And they just toss it in the yeah. dump. They threw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> This is their cold opening and, and uh, the chance for everyone to change the channel. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we get back, we're told that this was directed by Shannon Doherty. Yay. Um, this was the first <laughs> thing she ever directed. Well, wow. What a trial by fire, huh? <laughs> yeah. Think she had fun directing French Stewart? <laughs> that makes her one of like only like two or three female directors that ever worked on this show. Oh, oh. pathetic. In like eight years? ridiculous Ooh. yeah pretty bad she um she did direct the season three finale which she died in <laughs> and they <laughs> killed her off she died in um, this one too so. <laughs> yeah she keeps directing ones where she dies it's really one note honestly <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a great thing about my character she just has these monologues all over the place of just this great dialogue and it's all exactly how i speak i speak very very fast I guess, to be fair, the Charmed Ones died very, very often on the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, they're pretty suspicious of this genie. Um, but he assures them, you robbed, now I serve. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> very creepy. Um, he starts uh, getting very sexual about food. He's looking at snacks like he wants to fuck them. Mm -hmm. Because he wishes that he could be part of their world. <laughs> or a food fucker. Yeah, genies apparently can't feel or taste or touch or any of this stuff much like demons phoebe says no way is this legit uh like everyone else watching this episode <laughs> <laughs> this isn't no really way. the plot right <laughs> <laughs> that's not it right where's the real episode <laughs> this is their season finale i just want to point out French this was the genie. end of the season. <laughs> it's like, let's make sure to drive away as much as the audience <laughs> as we can from coming back for season three. <laughs> this, was, this was part of their weird pattern of, like, ending the season with a weird filler and the one before it seeming like a season finale. Like, mm -hmm. the episode before this was about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> They could have ended the season with that. And they're like, you know, I got a better plan. Yeah. We have something much stronger than that. <laughs> what if they were canceled? That was their series oh, finale. <laughs> yeah. Be amazing. They're like, this will get us renewed. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the... They're just trying to court the third rock from the sun audience guy. 
<laughs> They're like, oh, holy fuck. <laughs> French Stewart's on this episode. <laughs> Season seven of Third Rock from the Sun brought me here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they don't want to make any wishes because they feel uh, rightfully so that this is going to be a monkey's paw kind of situation. Uh, but he's like, I- I'm going to stay until each of you make one wish. But not Leo. Fuck Leo. It's, it's yeah. just you guys, I guess. Yeah, everyone only gets one except dead people, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Leo is here to fulfill his purpose, uh, which is exposition man. He, he will say facts uh, that they need to know, uh, such as genies aren't evil by nature, uh, but they can hurt you with their wishes. But as long as they don't wish, uh, they'll be fine. But they don't know how annoying French Stewart can be. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, they didn't watch anything he's been in before this. <laughs> Have you seen Love Stinks? <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was the year before this. He went from being in a theatrical movie to like, I'm the genie on charm. <laughs> Guess that didn't work out. You saw Love Stinks. <laughs> I think that's exactly where this should land him. Uh. This could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just to break up with my girlfriend? You should have married me. Can I just kill her and get off? This is L.A. It's such a horrible movie. It's really bad. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh. Did you t- see Tyra Banks in that? <laughs> Pretty yeah. good. Oh, God. Yeah. At least he died in the end. <laughs> His death was very much implied by the yeah. end. <laughs> he was gunshot, got infected, and he died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, um, Prue has a lunch date <laughs> that she needs to get to. Uh, so Phoebe uh, and, and Prue have an exchange that's very PC. Uh, Phoebe says, uh, leave the genie with the cripple. <laughs> and Prue uh, says real quickly, thank you, Gimp. Uh, lovely. <laughs> oh, man. What a year 1999 was? This is 2000. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, it's still. <laughs> yeah, it's still around the time I think people wouldn't think that much about that. Mm. Prue is a major bitch. Um, (laughs) She's going on a, quote, duty date with Dull Dick. Um, She just feels like she just has to be on dates, but she's not really feeling it. Dates. Lots and lots of dates. Yeah. Like, what? Awful. Yeah. Uh, This is apparently her third date with him, Mm. with Dull Dick. You never want a Dull Dick. Uh, (laughs) uh, uh. (laughs) Someone thought that was funny. Someone thought that was real funny. Yeah. You see, they do the they do the dick joke many times. It's, it's and it's never good. It's, it's, I thought it was funnier every time they said it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um well, if you want comedy, get ready for laughs. On this yeah. date, a wow. very tiny French Stewart. I, I like that it's like Phoebe watch the French Stewart genie immediately. He's there fucking up for his date. Yeah, well, she had to go, like, I don't know, take a nap or something. She, she didn't have time for this. Very tiny French Stewart on a green screen shows up on uh, Dull Dick's menu and jumps into the dick, subverting our expectations. French Stewart's back on the menu, boy. <laughs> hey, dick. Not often you see something jump into the dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. He um takes a cue from uh his friend Tyra Banks in uh, Life Size, starts eating butter, <laughs> <laughs> um and asking Prue what she's looking for. Apparently, this is the third date they've been on. Um, she thinks that dating's like a job. Uh, she did not notice tiny French Stewart. Uh, jumped inside him i guess um she says she just wants to be excited by love again and she wishes that it was just like the first time uh which which grants that wish for her and funny consequences will happen later (laughs) (laughs) meanwhile phoebe is looking through the book of shadows with the glasses she wore for like two seconds Mm -hmm. like i remember this briefly in season two they had her wearing glasses like i guess because they thought it made her look smarter (laughs) (laughs) Here. But it failed, so they just gave up on that. <laughs> yeah, and then they're just like, oh, Phoebe's the dumb one. <laughs> well, she's definitely the dumb one. <laughs> French Stewart shows up to bug her. Um, he's like, I can do every wish uh, except for world peace. That's the only rule that he gives. They could bring their mother back to life. <laughs> I never think to do this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> knowing that, it's the only really good knowing them. this show though she would have just been a skeleton like a Halloween store skeleton oh no <laughs> mm. 
I guess they didn't care because death means nothing in this universe. Grandma Ghost won't even like un- like get her bags and move out of the house. So yeah, and she still got her room in there. She shows up so often. <laughs> Later on, Phoebe's just chilling on the couch. I don't know if she gave up on looking through the Book of Shadows. <laughs> She's just laying down. Yeah, she had a hard time not watching the genie like she was supposed to. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch him. I don't know where he went. Whatever. <laughs> Should I give my sisters a head up? Eh. Eh. French Stewart starts buttering her up by massaging her ankle and she orgasms. Uh, um. It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> It's like, no, no one should have positive feelings from the touch of French Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> the trick she picked, he picked up from a sultan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I first read the script. It reminded me what I loved about movies when I was a kid. She asks him what would be his wish if he had a wish. Um, and he says he wants to feel things that people can, you know, taste, touch, smell, all that stuff. Have sex, because I guess he can't. Um, there's no apologies from the show for associating French Stewart with sex. <laughs> <laughs> he was still a big sex <laughs> There's absolutely no reason for French Stewart to bring up sex here. No. <laughs> he didn't need to do this. He's off of Love Stinks, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> love Stinks just like your feet. Whew. Uh, <laughs> time for a good fart joke. <laughs> so uh, she tells French Stewart how she fucked up her ankle. She was fighting a demon or something. And he's like, why don't you use your powers? <laughs> She's like, well, because I just got premonitions. Yeah. Like, wow, your powers sure suck, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's like, well, I love an active power, but uh, but uh, what are you going to do? And I guess that's a wish. Yeah. You don't even have to say wish now. It's no. Just, uh... Yeah. She, just, she doesn't like, if you could just do whatever, why didn't he just do whatever? Yeah. Yeah. If that's all that counts. Yeah, feels like it's breaking some sort of genie code there. Yeah, yeah. I think you should go to genie jail. <laughs> oh my god, I would love to see French Stewart in genie jail. <laughs> <laughs> so cut to uh, Piper and Leo at P3. They're talking about neighbor Dan. <laughs> Speak of the devil, the uh, greasy butt crack poo flap shows up. And he's jealous. Mm -hmm. Piper reveals that she knew who Leo was all along, and neighbor Dan's offended because he was worried about her. I don't know, like, if he can really be offended in this situation. (sighs) Like, how dare you? I did all this research and you knew all along? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I forget how that storyline went. Maybe, like, maybe she lied about it or something. I don't know. (sighs) It just, it seems like he walks in and he sees Piper with Leo and he's immediately getting stink face of it. Oh, come on. (laughs) I'm leaving. I'm going to put my house up for sale immediately. (laughs) Uh, Well, while this is going on, uh, French Stewart squints in the distance. ah. It's so so uncomfortable. (laughs) There's like three or four shots of him just squinting and turning around the corner. It's so bad. Yeah. I have to stink the scene up even if I'm not saying anything. <laughs> when it cut to that close-up of him looking around the pillar, making stink face, <laughs> all three of us audibly groaned. Yeah. <laughs> it's a visceral reaction to French Stewart's face. Like it's highly evocative, and, and so far that I wanted to die. Um. <laughs> I think you're incredibly hot. You know, we're not really brother and sister. It's all made up. Let's say we have a go at it. Piper is talking to Leo uh, while French Stewart uh, mugs in the background. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) she wishes there was a way that neighbor Dan could move on with his life. So uh, neighbor Dan sells his house and gets ready to move. (laughs) And ready to die. And ready to die. This like backdoor wish granting stuff like feels really like icky. I don't know. It feels like really invasive. (laughs) Mm. Just stalking in the background and just ruining someone's life. I don't know. Uh, It wasn't a fan. Stupid genies. It's it's not even like (laughs) taking a wish and bending it in a dumb way. It's just him misinterpreting someone's thoughts on something into a wish. Ain't I a stinker? It, yeah, and if that's all he's doing, it feels like it would have been really easy to get 
get free, you know, in the past. You could have just, you know, hung yeah. out around someone and just interpreted any question as a wish and mm -hmm. just done that because that's all he really does. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like the Charmed Ones were really dumb in this situation, though, because, like, well, Phoebe, like, I think that was just a stretch. That wasn't on her. Yeah. But the other two clearly say, I wish. And how many times in your real life do you actually <laughs> use the phrasing, I wish blank? Mm -hmm. But especially when you know a genie's around, like, you don't know if there's, like, some, like you know magical loophole that like it'll summon the genie if you say i wish so just don't say it yeah should be careful about your words yeah the neighbor dan wish is the third wish which sets the uh the genie free so he's off to do whatever he wants so they're at the house and uh prue shows up and she's young 17 year old prue with bangs and glasses yeah that's <laughs> how you can tell she's young <laughs> different clothes bangs and glasses <laughs> And uh, and braces too, right? Is the yeah. yeah and braces, yeah. I feel like they did the same thing with Rose McGowan when they had that flashback episode to her past. She like quantum leaps into her past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, they just have Shannon Doherty wearing this stuff. It's not a younger actress. Yeah, I feel like they really underplay too. Like she just kind of go. She's supposed to like be in the mindset of she's seventeen again. She just kind of goes, "Oh, Piper, you look older." And, like, kind of la -dee da oh well, my sisters are way older than I am now, cool. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't freak out at anything because she doesn't remember anything past 17. It's and they walk in on Phoebe floating in the <laughs> air, and she's just like, this is cool! We skip over the scene where she relearns her mother's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> hey, are you okay? I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but you're looking kind of old. But grandma's okay, right? And, well, good. there's good news and bad news. The good news is you can talk to grandma. The <laughs> bad news is she, she uh, she's still around as a ghost. She won't leave. Yeah, she never shuts And she that might have killed up. your boyfriend. <laughs> they do talk about that. They do definitely imply that she killed one of Prue's boyfriends when she was a teenager. Uh, to be in, in mm. Grammy's defense, he was put hands on her and like you know I can understand, you know. Taking him but, out. like, you don't <laughs> jokingly say that she murdered right, someone. Right. I'm, look, I'm not defending... <laughs> they were like... <laughs> I'm not defending the joke, I'm just defending the murder. <laughs> 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 They're like, when Prue was younger, she liked all the bad boys, and then there was this guy who was abusive, and then he disappeared. Hmm. <laughs> and then they leave it at that. Yeah. Much like Neighbor Dan's gonna disappear after this episode. <laughs> That's how they get rid of their boyfriends. It's, it's okay. <laughs> That's what happened to Dull Dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure neighbor Dan will go on have a very successful career acting in soap operas and whatnot. Mortal Kombat Conquest. You know he's marrying Angie Harmon? No, oh, is he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Real uh, Baywatch reunion oh, there. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Phoebe's floating in the air because she, uh, she has an active power now. She can fly. Can you imagine Phoebe flying in the show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's too expensive. <laughs> They're like, oh, this looked so good in this episode. Let's make this a reoccurring thing. <laughs> uh, Peter, she does gain flying powers it, later, which they wrote out because it was expensive. Does the effect look any better? <laughs> or does it really. still look like Superman the 4, whatever the one with the Golden Globus one is? <laughs> you know, I, I feel like it wasn't as funny as... I feel like it was just levitation, so they never had her just, like, flying across the sky like they do. Are you sure? I don't think she did. I thought there was a dumb shot of her doing something like this again later. I, I, there was the shot of her flying on a broomstick in the Halloween one. Yeah. You thinking of no, that? No, just, just thinking of her flying through the air. Maybe it's just my wishes. Hey, audience, if you remember, was there stupid flying shots of Phoebe later in the series? I feel like it was just levitation, which made it doubly pointless. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope there was more, because it was the highlight of the episode by far, was these goofy, terrible green screen shots of Phoebe flying. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so was good. So She's, like, doing the Superman pose, yeah. holding a demon, dumping him in a yeah, field. Yeah, didn't even have, like, a fan or something on her in the green screen, so it just looks really <laughs> no. awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, it's, oh it's man, like, it's wonderful, wonderful. It's like Phoebe, man, she flies like a moron. <laughs> uh, yeah, she she does that because um, 
the dragon demon guy shows up to kill them um, because the genie stole the flying power from him. Um, but they can't get rid of him because Prue doesn't have her powers yet at 17. Um, he breathes some fire at them and uh, Piper freezes him. So uh, they're like, what, what are we going to do with him? I don't know. Just dump him in a field somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what they do. They have Alyssa Milano on a green screen dumping the guy. Hilarious. <laughs> I don't know how much of this is the fault of the show just being shitty or, like, Shannon Doherty not having experience filming effect shots. I mean, they looked bad on Charmed quite frequently, but this was one of their worst shots, I feel. <laughs> it was it was really bad. Even for the time period and for being TV, it was really, really... It's, just, it's a basic... It's a shot the, they nailed the, in the Richard Donner Superman movies in the 70s. Like, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Piper and Leo are uh, looking through the Book of Shadows to figure out what they should do. Phoebe is flying outside uh, in the window, and then she Kool-Aid mans her way in, mm -hmm. <laughs> just smashes through. She was really French stewarding it up back there. <laughs> Squint my eyes and make off-color jokes. <laughs> They're like, well, we're just trying to figure out what to do. And Phoebe's like, oh, yeah, I know how to fix it. I read in the book already. I just thought I'd take a while to tell you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you put the genie back in the bottle and, and then you can undo the wishes by just, uh, you know, making him unwish them, I guess. So they're like, well, how are we going to find him? Well, he likes food. I guess the only place with food in San Francisco <laughs> is that place Prue had her date. Let's go. <laughs> it used to always be Quake. This is like post Quake. So like everyone used to go eat there and now it's whatever this place is. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird that they're like, he probably went back to that place, and they're exactly <laughs> right, and he's at the same table, even. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the same day. I feel like this is a very underrated scene. French Stewart is eating spaghetti while Holly Marie Combs nags at him. I feel like that's just a very good scene. <laughs> Does he even taste it, though? Like... Th he said he can't taste anything unless if he's free, maybe he can. Maybe that's yeah, what he I, wanted. I, I think I, that's implied. No, I think he has to be mortal, though, to do it. Yeah, they were acted like at the end he was really going to get those sensations and feelings. And I, I don't know what being free not like that <laughs> means. <laughs> Maybe he just has, like, a, a vor inflation fetish, and he just eats even though he can't oh, taste man, it, yeah. but he likes the sensation. Oh, man, this is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> is, th is this, um, is this a, a place that you want to play, Peter? You want to uh, elaborate on the, <laughs> the vor uh, fetish? I just don't. French I prefer Stewart not has. to talk about anything regarding French Stewart and anything potentially sexual. So, you know, <laughs> let's just keep those the Venn diagrams separate, please. <laughs> I want you, woman. So, so it's uh, Piper and Leo nagging at him and... Um, he says, well, someone sent me, but I can't tell you who it was because of the genie client privilege. <laughs> and while this is happening, he disappears because he's summoned by the Council of Evil. Uh, they're pissed because he violated his pact by using this plot to free himself and not kill the Charmed Ones. Uh, so they got to team him up with the dragon guy who previously failed. So they're like, these two failed, so let's team them up so they can fail extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're the, they're the Council, of, the Council of Evil. We're the best. J.G. Yeah. Hertzler is like, what do you feed a constrictor? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking up <laughs> snake care. <laughs> do they like genies? <laughs> Please, I hope they do. <laughs> You could barely tell he's holding a snake at first, because it's like banana yellow, just like his outfit. Yeah, it kind of blends in. It's so pointless that he's holding this. Yeah. Look, he's evil, though, okay? You have to know he's <laughs> evil. <laughs> Crimes against fashion. Dang. <laughs> you think he got this costume? He's like, I'm not making any other appearances on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I could do better than this. <laughs> this role is without honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, they have a scene of Phoebe talking to Daryl on the phone purely just so he can have some lines in his contracts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a there's, there's no reason. Yeah, there's no reason for, for this to happen. That's eh, great, Daryl. Don't die on us. 
Shut up, Mars. I had no idea that was a recurring character. I thought it was just like some <laughs> cop they were calling. Because <laughs> yeah. it was like three lines and it was over. <laughs> Is it because he's utterly plightless and has <laughs> no personality? It's kind of how he's just talking into a phone looking in a direction not even close to the camera and said three lines and it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, that is uh, Dorian Gregory, a.k.a. Teague, from Baywatch Nights. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> there are better Daryl episodes, but this is certainly uh, not in the top ten Daryl episodes. <laughs> Piper and Leo show up at the house, um, and they uh, talk about Grandma Ghost killing uh, Prue's boyfriend. Laughs are had. Uh, and that's when neighbor Dan shows up in terrifying old age makeup. <laughs> <laughs> We did unconvincing young person, now unconvincing old person. They could they could wish for anything. The only thing they could think of for this episode is aging two times. Oh yeah. yeah I didn't <laughs> even connect those dots right now. Yep. <laughs> Who was it that you said that like neighbor Dan looks like? Oh, he looks like, like Chris Christopherson. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna give blade <laughs> he advice. Stung by a bee, yeah, maybe? He looks like he's gonna give blade <laughs> advice on how to kill the vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Christopherson is the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> the Chris Keeper. Oh. Uh, I apologize for nothing. <laughs> hey, boys and girls. I'm in a love triangle. Uh, I just want to move on with my life. What happened to my niece? Aren't you dead yet? <laughs> I will be by the end of this episode. <laughs> Uh, he's senile, so it's okay for Piper to tell him about them being witches and all that. Yeah, we have orbs in front of him. Watch this. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to disappear forever after this. <laughs> Remember they, they had that episode about reincarnation, and then neighbor Dan was there as if, like, he's always part of their past lives and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look how important neighbor Dan is. Yeah. Always oh, intertwined. Anyway, get out of here forever. <laughs> yeah. Sad to say this is uh, his swan song. What a, what an episode to go out on, huh? Mm. <laughs> this makeup. <laughs> they might as well have killed him. They should have. I mean, I guess they did. Yeah. I guess they did. The death is they, in the <laughs> They rectified it later with that file that says he's gone missing and is presumed dead. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Prue, I guess, has snuck out of the house and is, uh, driving, uh, when she meets the dragon demon, uh, who she's immediately attracted to, uh, because he's a bad boy, despite knowing that he was trying to kill them. Yeah, she's an idiot, apparently. Well, he, yeah. <laughs> he was throwing flames at them and shit, and like, mm, he's cute, Look, that's though. Her, that's her thing, okay? <laughs> I mean, we can't, we can't kink shame anyone, you know? <laughs> Prue's got some weird kinks. She parks with him at a swamp or something? Yeah, Where are yeah. they? They, they, uh, they said that it was the edge of Golden Gate Park, which having been there, no, it wasn't. It was just some <laughs> just some hill somewhere. <laughs> it looks like the place where they shove the, the, the car in Psycho. A little yeah. bit. A little yeah. bit. It's apparently really far away from the house <laughs> when they need to go there, but when they're driving back from this place, it's really quick. So. Who yeah, knows? But, <laughs> yeah, and San Francisco is like 45 square miles, so like, there's no way it took more than an hour to get there. <laughs> like, it, goes from, it goes from full on night to day, and not even like dawn, like it's day. The sun is in the middle of the sky. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, while they're parking, um, he attacks her, so she runs off, and French Stewart shows up. They're planning on having the other sisters come and rescue her, but French Stewart is having second thoughts. She calls Piper for help. Um, Phoebe has a vision about it, but that's pointless, because they already had the call, so what? why? Um, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Leo stays with neighbor Dan, because why would they want his help when they don't have the power of three? <laughs> <laughs> and he's the only one that can heal them? Why? Just bring him there. Why didn't they call him? Can't they just go, Leo, and then he'll show up? He could like, have teleported them there, too, so they got there before daylight. <laughs> yeah, they could have done so many things that they didn't oh, do. Yeah. yeah, it's like the middle of the night, and then they drive, and it's daylight. Uh, um, Phoebe flies off to, to scope out the place. Um, like an idiot. And Prue... <laughs> Face plants. Prue runs out of the woods. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Prue runs out of the woods, gets grabbed by the dragon demon, and French Stewart grabs Piper. <laughs> she can't escape the sheer physical force of French Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. The the moment is supposed to be pretty serious because Prue gets stabbed, and yet it's kind of undercut by Super Phoebe flying in, <laughs> face planting, <laughs> and also just French Stewart being there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> undercut by French undercut by French Stewart could be added to any project <laughs> that he's in. Yeah, we we thought she must have been hit like hit a branch or something, but no, she just like drops. <laughs> yeah. Just <lands>. No. Just... <laughs> So they, they eventually escape and they take Prue to Leo. Again, don't call him nothing. Mm. They could even call on a cell phone. Call on the cell phone that Prue has. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they, they take they lug her ass over to the house. <laughs> uh, presumably this is mid-afternoon by the point in time they get there. Um, but she's dead! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Imagine Prue being dead. They'd never kill yeah. her off. <laughs> Leo can't heal her because she's dead. <laughs> so, uh, so cut to them crying, and Leo wanders in and goes like, "I don't know if this helps, but you're French Stewart." <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, no, this get him out of here. Worse. <laughs> get him away. <laughs> I thought of a few jokes. <laughs> That's a lot of sex for a dude with a straw hat. <laughs> I feel like we missed so much in between there, though, because, like, how did Leo know that he was having second thoughts or to go to him or that he would be good or did he come to him? Like, we get none of that. It's just all of a sudden he wanders in with him like, eh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. They, like, want him to, like, have, like, m morals or, like, a sense of self. And they're like, oh, man, there's some depth to this stupid joking genie character. <laughs> 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 He was like, yeah, but I don't know. It feels like Leo could have like grabbed him by like the ear and like had him begrudgingly help them, and it would have fit a lot more and not been like had friend Stuart try to like act, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's some logic that makes no fucking sense. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, "All right, I'll go back in the bottle, and then you can get. I'll I'll be a genie again. You have to wishes and whatever." Um, and then I'll bring Prue back to life because this is an actual line. Teenage Prue was killed, not adult Prue. Right. You know, if your younger what? self gets killed, then your older self will still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> she comes back and she's like, I'm here. But then she starts fading away like, oh, no, <laughs> my teen self was killed. <laughs> I like when she gets old again, her clothes morph back into what she was wearing first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a younger, it's fake young clothes. Still, still dead, but, you know, more modern yeah. wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, dead brew on the floor, hilarious. He goes back into the bottle, that's why that returns to the normal, and they're supposed to get the bottle, Um, but before they can get to it, uh, neighbor Dan, who's young again, he's grateful to be alive! He wanders in just as the dra dragon demon shows up and spits fire in his face! <laughs> <laughs> they should have- What did they kill him in uh, Conquest with acid to the face? Was that him? Uh, no, that was the Johnny Cage wannabe. He just got like the Ciro had that swinging blade above his head and stuff. <laughs> oh, they didn't kill him in Conquest. <sighs> he might have died. I can't remember. His death was implied. <laughs> he <probably> died. Yeah. <laughs> if he lived at the end, he died. <laughs> Um, in this attack, uh, the bottle is knocked off of uh, wherever it was, and Phoebe has a premonition where the bottle got knocked over <laughs> <laughs> so they can find it. <laughs> it's so useful. <laughs> yeah, they had a real real trouble figuring out what premonitions could possibly do to help them save people. Like, what does this premonition mean? It means the bottle's going to be under the couch. How <laughs> <laughs> no, like, can useless Phoebe be useful? Answer, she can't. <laughs> There's no, like, subtext. It's just under the couch. <laughs> yeah. Wow. If you answered Phoebe, she was never popular. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder sleuth. <laughs> they use the power of three to explode. Yeah, because the they need power of three to kill this stupid little dipshit who breathes I fire. I guess Prue was back. 
I thought they needed the genie. Oh, because yeah. they got the yeah, bottle they and the then bottle they bring and back lifer and then they power three him. Like <laughs> they get so silly with like what needs power of three to be killed on this show. It's... It makes no sense in this show because they're the charmed ones. So it's like who the fuck was using power of three spells before they were around? Exactly. And they act like sometimes there can be other charmed ones, sometimes like, no, it's just them. It's like Okay, so after they're dead or done, the world's fucked. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will say this was my introduction to the power of three. Um, I've heard you guys talk about it, and I just assumed it was like they joined their hands and like a spell was cast. But it's just them r- chanting, the power of three will set us free, and the guy just <laughs> explodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was not... Im- <laughs> That's how they get rid of a lot of villains, just... <laughs> yeah, lazy spells are abundant. <laughs> it was not impressive, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I was I not... <laughs> oh, man. Like, later episodes, Piper can just blow people up by just kind of sticking her hand out, so that happens a lot. <laughs> Uh, my favorite least impressive villain death <laughs> was uh, Billy Drago, as uh, I quote, they call him the greatest villain they ever faced, who is the uh, yeah. the demon of fear. And um, and uh, Prue, he tries to drown her and she's scared of, of drowning. And then uh, she gets out of there and she goes in a voiceover, like an ADR dead, like deadpan. I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> and he goes... No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of explodes into some red sparkles. <laughs> oh. I'm not afraid anymore. No! Pretty good. It's too bad. You now they didn't try to find a, a genie again at the end of season three to bring Prue back again, but I guess they just didn't want it that bad. <laughs> Yeah, they'll be like, well, adult Prue is fine, or maybe teenage Prue is fine, but adult Prue's dead, so if we bring back teen Prue. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there was one, I know there was one later where they had genies, and then, like, Phoebe gets turned into one so they could put her in the I Dream of Genie oh, outfit. <sighs> and I remember, like, Paige's boyfriend at the time on a magic carpet breaking through a window, and the shot was, it was tremendous. A tremendous effect shot. <laughs> anyway um i mean i don't know if it's more or less embarrassing than this episode Mm. uh so yeah uh, they're doing their wrap up uh neighbor dan is back to normal again but he caught a case of the daryls he doesn't want to (laughs) know don't want to know he doesn't want to know about this stuff yeah he's pretty depressed um uh so piper's pretty sad about this um (laughs) which is weird out of character (laughs) Yeah, she had some humanity. <laughs> Maybe French Stewart was uh, magicking her into feeling. <laughs> so he could feel vicariously yeah. through her. French Stewart is telling them all about the evil council. Uh, I guess this is the first time they're <laughs> learning about them. That's just shit. <laughs> they're like, yeah, well, I guess we must have gotten on their radar because we're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, they sent you after us. They must be pretty evil. <laughs> <laughs> they all state their lessons. <laughs> Wow, we learned a yeah. true lesson, like a Prue who says she learned not to settle for dick, <laughs> which sounds like her coming out. <laughs> <laughs> they have one more wish they want to make, and that's for neighbor Dan and Dan to move on in real life. Uh, n- uh, no, no tricks. Uh, yeah, you just have to don't, go. Don't turn no them old. Tricks. <laughs> Let him move on, but no tricks this time. <laughs> but no tricks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um this that's his exit from the show. The last scene that we see him is him going like I don't want to know. Yeah. Um and then like in season 7 they have those folders that they find uh, for missing people that has his last name on it. So presumably he's dead. Yeah. They killed him. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing of value was lost. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh RIP neighbor Dan. <laughs> It's kind of weird, too, like, they're the last wish they make, well, they make these two wishes, like, together, like, to make French Stewart human or whatever, and they say, like, oh, you'll feel, and it's like, we kind of felt when he was betraying the evil council, right? It's, like, weird. Well, I think they mean, you know, like, sensations rather than, yeah, like, feelings. They kind of acted like it was feelings, too, though. I just assumed when they gave him his mortality... 
um, his age caught up with him, <laughs> at, like at the end of uh, Last Crusade, yeah. and he, <laughs> well, and he dies horribly. <laughs> yeah, they make a point that he's mortal now. I just thought, like, when he walks off their porch, he just walked right into the street, and you're. <laughs> <laughs> And the neighbor Dan is standing there and the blood splatters on him. <laughs> I remember everything. <laughs> um, the very last scene is Leo is called to the elders for whatever. And Piper's like, uh, well, I'm going to go with you and meet the folks. <laughs> and that's the season finale. <laughs> yep. What a cliffhanger. You forgot to mention the other girls are in some very 90s, or I guess early 2000s-tastic uh, tube tops right there. They're not good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. the tops are not great. <laughs> yeah, Phoebe has like um, a weird shirt through this thing, where it's like, it's this um, pink-colored normal cloth, except for the sleeves, which is like made out of like old lady, uh, like going to the the Academy Awards dress yeah. material or something. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's very, it's weird. Not her weirdest outfit, but a little strange. Well. <laughs> 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 all right. What did, uh, first of all, what did you think of the episode, Phelan, watching it back? A tour de force by French Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> you will believe <laughs> he is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and you will believe a Phoebe can fly. <laughs> what, a, what a mess. <laughs> uh, Peter, as your uh, first Charmed episode, what did you think? <laughs> um, I feel like this episode was a glass of room temperature water. I drank it. <laughs> it was inoffensive. I'm... Like, would it be my first choice? No. Would it be my second or third choice? Also, no. <laughs> uh, um, uh, fr- it's good that French Stewart's got some work, um, I guess. <laughs> um, um, I liked the stupid, goofy council. Um, I liked the really bad screen screen. Um, Shannon Doherty... I really didn't like her in this episode. <laughs> I found her completely, uh, pardon the word, charmless. Um, uh, maybe she was so focused on directing, guys. Maybe maybe I'm being unfair. You know, she was wearing many hats. Her character uh, was not very likable in this one, which is, yeah, no, uh, her character very... usually is, is pretty solid compared to the ghouls her sister's become. But... Yeah. Ironic, because apparently she died. <laughs> <laughs> She she uh, died a hero rather than becoming the villain. <laughs> there we go. Uh, much like Carman. Yeah. <laughs> the hero we didn't ask for and didn't deserve. <laughs> I, f- I feel like this is one of the best bad episodes of Charmed. Um, it was when the show was still entertaining. Um, so, like, you got some bits where it wasn't, like, insufferable, um, paired with, like, a really silly plot. The villains were all ridiculous. Yeah. Um, just primo stuff. There's nothing like a heaven shot of an Ask Phoebe billboard or anything. So <laughs> much better. Just her flying straight into the sun. Yeah, <laughs> which is much better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for Charmed Rewind. Uh, if you guys uh, liked this, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, or reviewed on whatever platform you're enjoying this on. Uh, you can find it on in audio form on anchor.fm under Charmed Rewind or Charmed Hard with a Vengeance or on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash movie nights the series. Phalen's under youtube.com slash Phalus. Uh, Peter, what, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, no, but I do have a podcast that people can listen to if they liked hearing me talk on this podcast. Um, it's called Prequel, Sequel, Remake. We take movies that don't have prequels, sequels, and remakes, and we write them. Um, usually they're horrible and offensive, but um, we just did an episode on Hackers. It's really good. My friend made Hackers into a log flume ride. It's a wonderful time. <laughs> um, so you can check that out on any major podcast platform. Excellent. And where can they find you on Twitter? Oh, I'm at Pretor Hunter. Excellent. 
Um, and if you guys would like to uh, support us on Patreon, we got more plugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash movie nights. Patreon.com slash Phalus. Do you got a Patreon that you'd like to plug? Um, no. 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 Okay. No. <laughs> well, you guys should definitely check out Peter's stuff. Um, he's uh, been editing the podcast for us. Uh, his podcast is very funny. Uh, what hashtags should we use for this episode, guys? Hashtag French Stewart G's death was implied. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag uh, Chris Keeper. <laughs> uh, hashtag Prue. Be- prubescent does that work no i was, trying, what? To pre- I was trying to do a prepubescent and pru pun oh, but it didn't work oh pre-prubescent oh pre-prubescent yeah. there we go that's it that's the ticket right there <laughs> if you can spell it <laughs> spell it however your heart tells you <laughs> hashtag carman lives <laughs> we'll see you charmanders next time bye